at this point, so so that one basically happened organically. You had a hundred orders on your first post that you made there. But now, so do you do you follow that formula still? Do you pick a niche, build up content, build up an audience, or are you yeah. able at this point you can just go to go right to product? I I grow impatient. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like now ads first day, ads first day. Like I I don't even like the I build probably the fan page five minutes before I run the ads. Yeah. Because you just need a fan page to run your ads. That's it. So let's talk ads for a second. So, mm-hmm. what when you do like how do you know what's your first what's your test case when you launch ads like how how much do you put into it bef- before you know if you have something that you can build? Uh, okay, so there is a test phase and there is, because there is a difference between when you're first starting and when you already have assets and leverage. Yeah. So most people that I see, I think they make a big mistake is uh, there are people who run after products, which is totally fine. But the problem is they would do, let's say, a product for a woman, like 45 plus, and then their next product would be like men 20 plus. So they don't stick to the same demo. And that's a big problem. Because if you stick to the same demo, you actually can leverage your pixel, your data, your messaging, your list, everything. Your learnings too, like what you learn about that audience as well. Exactly. And you can leverage that for your second and third and fourth uh, product. But most people that I see, they just jump around and that creates a sense of instability and it makes your life harder even in testing. Now, let's say you don't have any of those assets and you're starting like from the get-go. Uh, I would honestly start with, uh, and here we may get a little technical, I would uh, always start with, uh, I love video ads. I love them. I just it's it's the most amazing thing I think right now on Facebook. So Cuz they're cheap. The with, views are cheap, relatively cheap still, right? Exactly. And it helps you also create more local like audiences like you have these video views that you can create retargeting based on them and look like audiences. I guess we'll get into that later and uh, that's an asset that a photo ad or a link ad will not give you. So uh, yeah, so for testing I start like with a video ad, I would start with video views or PPE. In most cases I start with video views and for the sake of checking if the actual ad will be engaging, if people are liking, if people are sharing, if people are commenting and you can do the same thing with a photo ad. Don't get me wrong, like yeah. if you cannot make a video, that's not a problem. Start with the photo ad and check the engagement. The engagement is key. Like you need an engaging offer. And when I say engaging offer, you can turn a bad product into a good product by changing the offer. And when I say offer, I'm talking free shipping, free plus shipping, uh, buy one, get one for free, uh, bundles, etc. So uh, yeah, so basically you check your offer if it's engaging or not, and then you go into full sale mode. Like if it is engaging, it should be selling. And then basically I would start my WC ads, my uh, website conversion ads, yep. and I would start like running traffic to that. And within the first $30, you would know if you will be actually selling or not. So what will happen is either people are like first case is uh, are people clicking or not? So if people are clicking, we're good. We will move to the checking the next thing. If people are not clicking, we have a problem in the Facebook site either the audience or the offer or the product or the link or the copy or whatever it is, we need to fix it on the Facebook side. Now, if people are clicking, are people buying or not? If people are buying, we're good. If people are not buying, what is it breaking up? Is it breaking on the product page, on the add to cart page or on the checkout page? And then we check. If people are actually adding to cart, so we don't have a problem with the product uh, page because it does what it's supposed to do, push people to the add to cart, right? Uh, now, if people are not clicking on the add to cart, mainly there is a problem with your product page. It can be the price, it can be the copy, it can be the image, it can be the loading time that most people ignore. It can be anything in that product page. So check all the elements and install a heat map. Whatever you do, please install a heat map so you know what's happening. Like you don't run blind because there is nothing worse than running ads without tracking everything. You are literally a blind person, like in a high traffic street. You don't want to be that person. Trust me. You want to have every detail nailed down in your funnel or in your store or whatever you're pushing traffic to. So uh, basically, yeah. So you check your uh, product page and see if people are adding to cart or not. If not, fix whatever it needs to be fixed on your product page. Then if people are adding to cart are not buying, there is probably a problem with your cart page. I have seen, trust me, I have seen cart pages that 
will not only push you back from the cart page, but will actually like make you hate the whole experience. So you want your cart page like to be clean, straight to the point. It does only one thing, and one thing only is pushing people to the checkout page. Like I have seen people that they don't really optimize their mobile checkout page, where they add like different buttons: check out with PayPal, check out with uh, with uh, Amazon, check out with Bitcoin, and you see all the buttons like all crumbling together, yeah. and you are on a phone, and you cannot actually do what you want to do. So uh, yeah, so basically you fix that, and then at the end you see what happening with the checkout now again you need to know where it's breaking so you can fix it because what you will hear most case like my product is not selling people are clicking but they are not buying uh, okay so you need to diagnose what is not working in order for you to fix it it's like going to the doctor step by they will step start, exactly like when you go to the doctor they would like they would start checking you your eyes your your throat, this, that, and ask you a question, what hurts you, where, and then they will push. So the same thing you do with your funnels, the same exact thing. Interesting. And that's basically how you fix stuff. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. So you want to go step by step. You want to, yeah, and, the, you, and you have to treat every part of the funnel. Yeah, you, you start with Facebook because that's where people enter your funnel. So you start that, you, you get your, your engagement, you get your clicking, you get people talking. And then from there, this is this is something I hear all the time. We have a guy who's actually in our office right now, who's who's um, doing drop shipping. Basically, he he left a very stable job to just throw himself into this world. And he's a super smart guy, so I know he's going to figure it out. Um, but uh, he's having a ton of that right now, where he's getting people clicking, he's getting people talking. He's picked an item that is a bit a uh, higher ticket. It's like a forty nine ninety nine item, which I think might be a little bit high for this space. That's it's not a problem. Not even if it's if. If the perceived value of it is $49.99, he should have no problem selling.